grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We sing our first hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down the weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, so weary worn and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water, thirsty one, stood down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in to me thy morn shall rise and all thy day be bright i look to jesus and i found in him my star my son and in that light of life i'll walk till travelling days are done. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. We're going to sing canticle number two, the Venite. 
Let us sing to the God of salvation, to the Lord let us praises bring. Let us come to his house with thanksgiving, let us come before the Lord and sing. Praise our Maker, praise our Saviour, praise the Lord our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before him, God is Lord of everything. In his hand are the earth's deep places, and the strength of the mountains tall. All the sea is the Lord's, for he made it, by his loving hands he formed us all. Praise our Maker, praise our Saviour, praise the Lord our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before Him, God is Lord of everything. Sing glory to God the Father, sing glory to God the Son, sing glory to God the Holy Spirit, who was and is and is to come. Praise our Maker, praise our Saviour, praise the Lord our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before Him, God is Lord of everything. Let us pray. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip, and Bartholomew. Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Two phrases jumped out of that passage for me. The first one gives us a picture of Jesus' compassion. It says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Helpless and harassed like sheep without a shepherd. 
And when he sends the disciples out, he says, I'm sending you to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It seems that Jesus had a sense that people were lost, disconnected, not part of things. It's interesting that he began by teaching in their synagogues, but then he had compassion on the crowds. In other words, the religious establishment had time for the faithful synagogue worshippers. But there's a contrast there between those in the synagogue and the crowds to whom Jesus referred, whom Jesus referred to as the lost sheep, the sheep without a shepherd. The religious establishment excluded the sick, the lame, the lepers, those who work for the Romans, the poor, the racially impure, women and children. And Jesus recognised these people as lost. Lost with no one to lead them, no one to guide them, no one to love them. They thought they were excluded from the things of God. That they didn't belong to God. Jesus, by contrast, made time for them. Not for nothing. Did some of his parables deal with being lost? The lost sheep. The shepherd leaves the 99 and goes looking diligently, searching for the one who was lost. The lost coin. The woman sweeps the house from top to bottom to find the coin that was lost. Jesus doesn't want any of us to feel lost. God, says Jesus, searches diligently for the one who is lost. I think that's a relevant passage, relevant message to us here in 2023, just as it was in first century Palestine. For people today feel alienated, estranged from the things of God. It may be their own choice. But it may be the result of the culture of the society in which we live. A century of secularisation has taken away people's spiritual reference points. It's not surprising, therefore, perhaps, that we see an upturn in depression and anxiety. People are lost. Can we interpret lostness, perhaps, not as a turning away from God, but perhaps as evidence of our deep need for God, our deep yearning for God. And can we as Christians, as followers of Jesus, show our, by our love for them, as Jesus did, that they're not unloved, that they are loved, accepted, welcomed, however alienated or lost they might feel. And can we share with them our own experience of being lost? Showing them that the church isn't full of holy people, but of human beings, sinful human beings, who get things wrong, who feel lost. Can we dare to reveal our vulnerability so that others may know and understand. And the question left, of course, is what is it? What is it about God that finds the lost, that loves the unlovable, that accepts the rejected? And of course, the phrase that the Bible uses for that is the grace of God. The grace of God. What a wonderful word. God's Generous love channeled through us. God's generous love, even when we don't deserve it. It's summed up in a phrase of a song that I learnt in Kenya. 
I actually learnt it last year. It's not a Kenyan song, it's a song from America, but it's very popular in Kenya. And it just has this repeated phrase in the chorus, I'll sing it for you in a minute, um, which seems to me to sum up beautifully what God's grace, what we mean by God's grace. The overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. The overwhelming, never-ending, eternal, endless, reckless love of God. As I say, I'm going to sing this song for you. I don't usually end a sermon with a song, but it's as good as a prayer, really. I learned it in Kenya, and perhaps they love it there because it speaks volumes to those who are poor. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, Chases me down, fights till I'm down, leaves the ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. When I was your foe, still your love fought for. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so good to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I Leaves the ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no will you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm down, leaves the night in I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. So let us affirm our shared faith in the words of the Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you have called us into life and called us to love you. And you have called us to proclaim your love and power in all the world. Lord, send us out in the power of your Spirit, that we may tell of you and your abiding presence. We pray for your Church, that we may show signs of being one in you. Holy and dedicated to being apostolic, as we reach out to all peoples. Bless and guide all who preach the word and all who share in your ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, Lord, as we pray for all who are called to govern, all who influence the minds of others. We pray for leaders of industry and commerce and for all they work with. Lord, help us to show our care for the earth and our respect for the individual in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks because you show us your love through those who love and care for us. We ask your blessing upon our homes and our loved ones. And pray for homes where there is stress and distress. Pray for all who are finding it difficult to cope in the present economic climate. And we pray for all who are seeking to help those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give you thanks for all involved in the ministry of healing. We ask your blessing upon doctors and nurses and all emergency services. We pray for those who are good neighbours and carers in their local community. We remember those who are suffering from illness or disability, all who are struggling with life or who feel lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints, all who have heard your call and done your will. And we ask your blessing upon our loved ones who are departed from us. May we all share together in the joy of your love and your eternal kingdom. And so rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's offer ourselves afresh in God's service as we say together. Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We sing our second hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that 
peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ.